It is a pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Imam Said Hassan al Kazwini. Imam Kazwini is from a prominent religious family and was born in Karbala, Iraq. He graduated the Islamic Seminary in Qum, Iran in 1992. He pursued the highest Islamic studies in jurisprudence, fundamentals of jurisprudence, and Quranic commentary. During his studies, Imam Kazwini ran an Islamic journal, Anabras, which means the eternal light. He has been honored to attend academic lectures of great scholars such as Ayatollah Wahid Khorasani, Jawad Tabrizi, and Mutazari, and has authored and published two books. In 1992, he migrated to the USA and directed the Azara Islamic Center in Orange County, California. In 1997, he moved with his family to Detroit and joined the Islamic Center of America to become the religious leader. Imam Al-Kazwini's talk is Walking with God's Mercy. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحبه المنتجبين My dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm so honored and delighted to be speaking to such a distinguished group of brothers and sisters here in Washington D.C. in the anniversary of 9-11th attacks. <clears throat> I'm only given 20 minutes to speak and you know this is one of the most difficult things in the world to give the microphone to an Imam and ask him to speak 20 minutes only. But I will try to do my best within 20 minutes. And uh, I was asked to speak about how the mercy of God has manifested itself through my personal life. There is a beautiful ayah in the Quran, my dear brothers and sisters, and of course every ayah in the Quran is so beautiful and inspiring. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نَعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا There are countless of na'mah and favors in our life that we cannot even count. I was born in a holy city of Karbala, but I really was... I wasn't able to know much about this world before I was forced to leave my town. I was seven years old when I had to flee my country, Iraq. And I did not know even why I'm fleeing Iraq. Uh, the reason was because my father was a prominent scholar and he was a critical of Saddam's regime and he was tipped off by the governor of Karbala that Saddam is about to capture him and execute him. So we had to leave. All I know is that my father came one day and he said, one morning when we woke up for the school, he said, you're not going to school, we have to leave. I was so happy that I'm not going to go to school that day. But we left our country, Iraq, to Kuwait. And that was the probably major manifestation of Rahmah. I didn't know why I'm leaving Iraq. Probably my family was upset that we're leaving Iraq. But of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was leading the way. You drive the car and there is a GPS. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala runs your GPS. You decide for something, you do something, but Allah leads your way. In Kuwait, I stayed for a couple of years. Then my life took me to Iran to study in the seminary for 12 years. Then in 1992, as I was pondering on how I would, would, would navigate through my life and where to go, I decided to come to the United States as an immigrant. Again, I was not really sure where life was taking me and what I was going to do in this country. But again, my dear brothers and sisters, that was another rahmah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has manifested for me 
that I could have used my expertise, my knowledge, in spreading Islam in this country. You know, 10 years ago when these attacks took place, Muslims were as upset as everyone else. We were outraged as every other American. Because we Muslims had to pay the price for that ultimately. Because we were the ones who were viewed with a suspicious eye. We had to prove our innocence even though we didn't have to do that. But many people, many Americans were asking us to prove that we have nothing to do with that. Many Imams, many scholars, when in MOVE, speaking in all places in this country, explaining what Islam is to American people. And then that also helped educating Americans about Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Yes, it was bad, very bad to see people, to see innocent people falling victims during that day. But ultimately, there were thousands of people and maybe today millions of people who came to understand what Islam is and now they are able to make that distinction between Islam as a peaceful religion, as a religion that was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his great messenger, a religion of rahmah, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ A religion that preaches rahmah for everybody, not only for Muslims. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam in one dua, he says, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi rahmatika allati wasi'at kulla shay. Your rahmah has dominated everything. Not only Muslims, not only human beings. God's rahmah has dominated everything. Now we have the chance, my dear brothers and sisters, to tell Americans what Islam is, is about. The truth about Islam. This, is, this opportunity has been caused by 9-11 attacks. I have, been, I have spoken in more than 400 churches and universities since 9-11. And this is not, you know, a, a, a unique case. This is something that most imams, educators, professors, Muslim professors, and Muslim leaders have been doing for the last 10 years. They have been educating Americans about our faith, about our religion. I remember, my dear brothers and sisters, right after the attacks, a month after the attacks, New York Times wrote an article in which it says that before the attacks, there were 25,000 people in the United States converting to Islam every year before 9-11. Guess what? After 9-11, it got rupled. 100,000 people are converting to Islam every year. This is according to New York Times. And then the New York Times, the newspaper, would go and pick some samples of those who converted to Islam after 9-11. One of them was a female lawyer in, in Ohio who says, when I heard about the attacks, I was so horrified. What kind of religion that teaches hatred and murder of other people? So I decided to go and study this religion. So she went to bars and nobles and she purchased some books about Islam and 11 days later she converted to Islam. Isn't that God's mercy? Isn't that God's miracle? My dear brothers and sisters, I can go on and on talking about how many Rahmah, how many miracles Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has manifested in our life as Americans, as Muslim Americans, to promote the cause of Islam in this country. I can go on and on. But I would like to emphasize one point, my dear brothers and sisters. What is our responsibility? What is our work? We can talk about what Allah has done on our behalf. But what we have done, Muslims, in order to promote Islam in this, in this country. I'm sure we have done good, but have we really met the true expectations? Have we really exhausted our potentials? No, I think there is more to do. There is more room for us Muslims to perform. I guess there are four, four key elements 
that Muslims need to pursue in order to have a successful life in this country. I don't mean individually. I don't mean a successful individual life. Rather, a successful life for us as a community. Number one, education. Education is very important, my dear brothers and sisters. Believe it or not, most Americans do not know the basics about our religion. Today, there are 28% of Americans who believe that President Obama is Muslim. That means at least there are 100 million Americans who believe that the president is Muslim. Now, of course, that is an honor that he never claimed. But we know it's not true. We know it's not true. Americans have been target of misleading propaganda machine. They don't know much about our faith. They know more about Michael Jackson's private life and Amy Weiner's private life and Britney Spears' private life than they know about Islam. So who's going to go and educate them about our religion? It's us. We need to do that, my dear brothers and sisters. We need to offer a better education about Islam. And by the way, we Muslims are not interested in proselytization, just like some evangelicals do. It is enough for Muslims just to speak the truth about Islam, and you will see how powerful that will be. I have been to many churches, many churches in this country. The moment I speak about Islam, the moment they hear these words coming from an imam, I see how people are being transformed. They hear something new. It is not something that they have heard before because all they heard is negative. Their main source of information about Islam was Fox News. And now they are hearing something new. My dear brothers and sisters, we have to educate Americans about our religion. And they, they deserve that. Alhamdulillah, today we have many scholars, many leaders, many professors who can do that. We have no excuse. We live in a country that we have freedom to do that. So that's number one. Number two, some Muslims come to this country. It's a beautiful country. You know Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, says, خير البلاد ما حملك لا ما حملك. The best, a Muslim as Muslim, I do not belong to no land. كلها أرض الله. It's all Allah's land. What really I need to do is I need to find a land where I can function peacefully and successfully. And America did this to Muslims. In this country, some of us come to this country and we do not participate. Meaning, we view America as an ATM machine. We come, we work, we make money, and then we're planning to take off and go back to the old country. Even though most of the times that doesn't happen. We end up stuck here. I think we need to change our perception. You know, when Jews moved to this country after the Second World War II, uh, after World War II, they shed away their European identity. And they adopted a new identity, an American identity. And that's partly why they, are, why they have been so successful, because they adopted a new identity, American identity. We need to do the same thing. We need to, at the same time, we need to maintain our Islamic identity. We need to develop a new identity. We need to become part of this country. When there is a, a national disaster, we need to participate, not sit outside and watch as spectators. When there is a hurricane, when there is a flood, when there is a problem in this country, we have to show Americans that we are as concerned as any other American. Not only when there is a flood in Pakistan, Iran, Iraq, no, even here. Because as a humans, we have a responsibility to reach out to other human beings as well. Number three, we Muslims need to organize ourselves. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, in his final will, he says, وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِنَظْمِ أَمْرِكُمْ People, get organized. Unfortunately, we Muslims, I often see that we are not as organized as we need to be. We need to look at our cousins, 
here in this country. Look how they are organized they are, how well connected they are, how many grassroots organizations they have that have been lobbying on, on behalf of their communities. Why don't we do that? We need to get organized. We need to have more national organizations that advocate for us, that promote our causes. We need to have more Muslim congressmen and congresswomen. We need to have Muslim senators. We need to have Muslim ambassadors. And this is not going to happen unless we get organized, unless we become part of the system, unless we become and register for vote, unless we become a part of the political and public system of this, of, of this country. So we need to get organized, my dear brothers and sisters. And finally, <clears throat> participation, education, organization, and finally, reconciliation. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, we Muslims belong to so many different, different ethnicities, to so many different schools of thought. We need to turn these sources of division into sources, into sources of diversity. In other words, instead of viewing our different ethnicities and different schools of thought as a source of division, they have, they have to be turned into a source of richness and strength. It is totally fine that you have an indigenous Muslim, an immigrant. It is totally fine to have a black and white American, a Shia and Sunni. But what we really need to avoid is conflict and fighting with each other. We need to stop fighting with each other. We need to look at the bigger picture. We need to work with each other as Muslims. You know, two weeks ago after the khutbah, khutbah al Jumu'ah, we have a tradition to pray, do dua. So I did a dua. And I mentioned some Muslim countries. I mentioned Palestine, Afghanistan, Iraq, and you know, many other countries. And when I finished, I came home, I opened my email, and there is a sister who is very upset with me. I was expecting her to compliment me because I mentioned some 10, 15 Muslim countries. But yet she was still critical. She says, Imam, I came to your center, I listened to your khutbah, it was good but you forgot to mention Kashmir. I said, oh my God, yes, that's true. I did forget Kashmir. But my dear brothers and sisters, we need to make sure that we are one ummah and we are treating each other as one ummah. Our internal divisions and conflict will not do anything other than weakening us. In order to be strong, in order to move forward, we Muslims need to put our differences aside. I'm not saying Shia have to become Sunni or Sunnis have to become Shia. No, you can still be Shia and Sunni, yet you can work with each other. We are one ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنَّ هَذِهِ أُمَّتُكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً وَأَنَ رَبُّكُمْ فَعْبُدُونَ Allah could have created people all Muslims or all Christians, all, all Shia or all Sunni. However, the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he created us وَلَا يَزَالُونَ مُخْتَلِفِينَ He created us وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ لَجَعَلَ النَّاسَ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً He could have created us all one color, one language, one sect. But yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to diversify us but in one ummah and that is the Muslim ummah. Being Muslim doesn't need, does not mean that we need to all be one sect. Uniformity doesn't mean, unity doesn't mean uniformity. We can still be united with maintaining our differences and yet we can move on, inshallah. I would like to appreciate the time given to me. I would like to thank the organizers, especially the Zaytuna uh, Institute, our dear brother Imam Zayt Shakir, and all other brothers and sisters who have been so instrumental in implementing this very beautiful platform today. May Allah bless you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.